Greetings everyone. So we continue with our cryptography 4.6 and today I'm going to discuss what is called the RSA protocol, a very commonly used um, encryption protocol. And what does it stand for, RSA? It's this, the initials of the three people that um, published it and, and made it available, although um, there is indication that other people have already uh, had perhaps also discovered this, but they are the ones that are accredited with it. It is Rivest, Shamir, and Edelman. I've never really understood why they put it not in alphabetical order. Well, why not ARS, right? Which in Latin is a very beautiful word. It means art. But in British English it sounds very bad because it's the same as the word ass. So perhaps that's the reason. I have no idea. I've never looked into that. So let me set remind us of what we are dealing with. We have um, A, Alice, which would be to not just B, and we have Bob. And Bob wants to send a message to Alice. He has a message M that he wants to send to her, but he doesn't want anybody else to hear this. In particular, he doesn't want Eve to uh, read that message. So he's going to use a cryptographic system. Now, it's actually Alice that will tell him what to do. Alice says, okay, I'm, so remember what, we need, what needs to happen. We have this M here, and we're going to uh, use an encryption. So using an encryption key, uh, we're going to get a coded message, C, and it's not M that, she, that he will send, he will send C. But then... What we need is not, so this is an encryption. And then what Alice needs is a decryption. So this will be the decryption. So that she recovers the original message M. Okay. And so we, we know that we have an encryption key and a decryption key. Now, we can have, we can do this, that both have something in advance. Um, set up. The whole deal is now that Bob doesn't have any encryption yet. So Alice is going to provide him with this information, but in doing so she must accept that Eve can hear this. And so she actually puts on her website perhaps even, whomever wants to call me, Bob, bling, hint, hint, uh, you can use this uh, encryption method and nobody will be able to read what you say except for me. Okay, so what does this mean is that some of the information that she's going to post is going to be public, and that is going to be the encryption key. So green will, for me, mean public. Meaning to see, this is, or if you want, from Eve's perfect perspective, this is something she can see, right? So also the transmitted message itself, the C, the coded message, which I'll keep writing in orange, is in some sense also public. It should perhaps also be green, but okay. That's not the issue here. So we have the encryption key is public. So Alice posts this on her web website. They say, whoever wants to do this, use this. And then she has uh, red. So red means secret. So only people that have the red decryption key can read the message. That's the idea. That's how public key um, protocols should work. Okay. So now, um, what do we do? This RSA protocol is, I'm going to give, give a specific way of doing this. And in some sense, there is two data. It's not just the encryption key, there's also a number N. Okay, so what are these two? Uh, and I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to work with an example and then later explain how this works and why this, what, where this example comes from. So in this particular case, so this is an example, right? But I'll explain later the general case. The example is um, the 2537. So this will be our modulus, okay? So keep in mind this is, we're going to work mod this number. But be careful, that's not the only thing that we're going to do. Um, the real encryption is actually E, and so in our case, I think I'm going to take 13, yeah, 13. Okay, so I'm going to first say what it is that he's going to do. So here we have our message M. Now, we have to assume that the message is smaller than the modulus. 
because what we're going to transmit is a, is a residue mod, a uh, remainder mod 2537, so it's a number that is smaller than that. Okay, and what can you encode in that way? Well, um, remember that the alphabet, we encode a letter for alphabet from 0 to 25. So, for instance, if we want to encode the word, uh, I don't, I'm just making up something. No, I want to do, okay, no, let, let's, let's first think of M just as a number. Okay, so M is some number that I'm going to decode, and then I'll do an example later. So, what is the procedure? So, Bob takes M, and then he calculates the following thing. He takes M, puts it to the power E, so that is my E, and calculates this mod M. Oh, sorry, this is supposed to be... Okay, this is the calculation he does, which is which we do using uh, fast model. Uh, um, I should do this. So let me set up my pens here a little bit because otherwise I'm gonna take forever to switching. Okay, that's that. Okay, so um, uh, sorry, what was I trying to say about this? So. Yeah, so how do we do this? We use a fast modular exponentiation. Right? Uh, I will work out all the details in another example. But in this example, I'm going to go a little bit faster to show you what, what, what happens. So, for instance, suppose the message that you, he wants to send, the M here, uh, let's take M equal to 1819. Okay, so what does he calculate? He gets 1819 to the power 13. So remember, 13 is something that everybody can know. So everybody can do this, right? Of course, 1819 is something that is perhaps, yeah. The message that he sends is, of course, also a secret message, right? But I'm not going to do make that red. <clears throat> I'm just keeping the keys. Okay, so he has to calculate this modulo... Um, the number uh, 2537. Okay, so how does it go? Well, <coughs> the calculation, I'm not going to do the calculation in this particular case, the whole detailed calculation of how you do modular exponentiation. I'm just going to, if you want to cheat, by using Wolfram Alpha or, 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 or any online on, any, uh, calculator that calculates uh, remainders modulo given a modulus. So, in, in tests and quizzes, I will specify whether I want you to do the calculation by hand or if you can use a calculator or online calculator to do this uh, faster. If You have to research it if you don't know how to do it, but I showed you already that Morphon Alpha does this, right? So, um, so in this case, so let's, let's see here, I'm just going to do it here for myself. Um, It's uh, 18, 18, 19 to the power, uh, no, sorry, to the power 13 modulo 2537. 2537, and that's supposedly, um, this is equal to, so I, I did, as I said, I cheated. So this will be now the coded message. So this will be orange, right? So it will be 2081. Okay, let me double check that this is the same as what the book comes up with. Uh, yes, okay. So he sends this, this is now that he sends. He sends this, this is being sent to, uh, to Alice, but Eve sees it. Eve is watching. Okay, so we, we will get to Eve later. How does, can Eve figure out what this original number was, 1819 or not? That's the question, right? But for now, what does Alice do? So she receives this 2081, so it goes to Alice. So what she now uses is her decryption key. So I'm going to tell you in this particular case what the decryption key is without yet giving reason why it is this. The decryption key is going to be... Um, 
sorry, I'm cheating here because I'm checking it up. 937. Why 937? All will be revealed, but let's see how it would work. If that's the case, so what she needs to do, what will she do with the D? She does basically the same kind of calculation, but except using E, she uses D. Keep that in mind, okay? So what she does is she takes her C. Oh, sorry, I need... Okay, let me make it so uh, red, right? And I'm adding this to my favorites. Okay, all right. So um, she uses this number. What happened to my... Oh, I wanted orange. I wanted this to be orange. Okay, make this a favorite too. I'm sorry, guys. I just want to... Where is it? Oh, maximum favorites. How do you delete the favorite then? I, uh, oh, remove. Okay. So I'm going to make this a favorite. Okay, here we go. All right, so we, she takes 2018. She takes this number, 2081, raises it to the power her secret 937, and calculates this modulo, the same public modulus, if that doesn't change, okay. And so what is this? If I, please do this, verify this, right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm saying, I'm looking it up in, of, well, from alpha, but you should do this with me on your uh, own, um, um, so double checking that whatever I say is true, right? 2081 to the power 13 modulo, the same modulus and I get oh no no not 13 sorry not 13 oh no that, that's why I didn't get the same thing 937 937 so that's the okay 1819 so this comes out to be, let me do this in black, and this is 1819, which is indeed the original message. So we did recover the original message. So what's the, the magic that goes on here? Why does 937 do this, happen this? Okay, so now I'm going to have to explain what is behind. This is, if you want, I told you the instructions how to drive the car. But now we're going to open up the hood and show you how the car actually works. All right, are you ready for that? So let's, before I do this, let's see, let's do two things. Let's, let's see. Okay, here. Just double checking that we understand everything. Um, suppose Bob is sending another message using the same key. <clears throat> and... We don't know what the message is, but we know that the code, the code that Alice is receiving is um, uh, <clears throat> uh, where is the code? 0981. 981. I don't know why I said 0981. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was the original message? So we do the same thing, we take 981, we raise it to the power 937 and calculate this modulo. And this is always modulus, this uh, 2537, okay? So, if I do this with Wolfram Alpha, um, <clears throat> what is it, 981? 981 to the power 937. And you get 704. The answer is 704. Okay. Now imagine that these 704 represent letters, right? So remember every two digits we have from 0 to 25 represents uh, our alphabet. So 7 would be what? So it is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So this would be uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So this would be an H and 0, 4 would be an E. So he was sending he, H, E. Okay, so we can decode a message uh, what he sends. 
So I'm saying for us, we're going to just deal with the numbers, but these numbers normally in, uh, are already an encoding of uh, letters. But that is not a secret thing. That is just ASCII or whatever you, whatever method you decide to do this. Okay, so what's behind the, what's underneath the hood? Let's now start looking under that. So I'm, I'm, I'm re reminding you again what the setup is. We have two public numbers, N and E. Okay, and so I have to explain now what are they actually. Well, first of all, N is a product of two primes, but notice I make them red. You're not supposed to know what these two primes are. That's the whole b b bit of it. Now you might say, well, well, that's not, I can't factor a number. Well, no, that's, remember, that's why we were studying uh, complexity of algorithms and we said, at the moment, as far as we know, factoring numbers, well, that's not as far as we know, we know that factoring numbers is NP complete problem, meaning that unless something miraculous happens that we don't expect, P, versus, P equals NP, unless we don't have this, at the moment at least, means that factoring it takes exponential time and therefore is considered impract intractable if we're dealing with big numbers here. And the numbers that we're dealing with is each of these primes are about 100 digits. So what you get n is about 200 digits. That's a huge numbers. Uh, I will come back to that later. So, and at the moment, therefore, it is Nobody knows how to factor a two-digit, 200-digit number into prime factors, especially if there are two big fa factors like this, P and Q, they are kind of both big, big numbers. Of course, if, if the, the number ends in two, we know that two is a factor, because that's just how even numbers work. But not in, this is not such an easy thing to do with this. So P and Q are very secret numbers. Okay. Now, there's another number that is an auxiliary number, and that is also therefore secret, is this number is the product, not of the primes themselves, but P minus 1, Q minus 1. Subtract 1 from each. Okay? I'm saying this because now comes D. What is D going to be? D, well, there is one condition. So E and N cannot be anything. Well, N has to be a product of primes. What we now need is the next thing that we need about E. Again, this is secret information. Is that this is a relatively prime with capital N. So it has no divisors in common with capital N. So let's look at the example that we had. So here on the side. So here is, I'll, I'll do it here. We, we have it still, we can keep it, yeah. So we had, what was that? Let's see what our, our E was. E was 13, okay. And N was 2,537. So first of all, let's look at that number. What are the primes here? So I, this is a small number that can be easily factored as um, uh, 43 times 59. So this is so 43 times 59. I'm writing in red, meaning imagine you don't know how to factor at all. Then 43 and 59 are kind of secret numbers for you. So now this capital N, remember, was this number, is the product you subtract. So 42 times 58 which is, um, sorry, uh, sorry, give me time here. Mm. Two, four, three, six. So this is also a secret number, by the way, because if you reveal that number, you can actually solve, decrypt. So you have to keep this uh, secret for yourself. Now, I haven't still said what D is, right? So we know now all these things. Oh, yeah. So is 13 relative prime with 2, 4, 36? We can double check. Yes, it is. Because why do we need this? And this is the whole clue. Since E is relative prime with N, since we have this, it has an inverse modulo N. Remember, we had this, and we have actually a technique of finding the inverse. That was the old Euclidean algorithm. You find the GCD, the G Relatively prime means that GCD is 1. Yeah, you find 1, and then you do the Pizu form, you work backwards, and that gives you the inverse. So D is going to be, so I, I, I tell what D is. D is the inverse of E mod N. So that's why you have to keep N secret, because if 
you know n, then you have to calculate the inverse of e. And the in calculating the inverse of a number modulo, any num modulus is n very fast. The Euclidean algorithm is uh, is is something of ex logarithmic time or um, or a sub of, of, of what do we call it? Ac time n log n. So. That is very easy. The calculating the inverse of E is very easy. So I should perhaps keep E green here because that's the one thing we do know. So the, the one the number that you really try to keep secret is this n also. Uh, is this n? Because if you know this n, you can do this. Okay? But if you don't know n, you cannot do this. So what I'm saying here, so remember our D was 937 here, right? So let's see here. Uh, in our case, D was 937. That's what I told you. Right? I didn't tell you where it came from, now I'm telling you. So what my claim is, what does this mean? This means in this case that, um, let me get rid of these two guys here. This example we don't need to see anymore, right? Uh, this means that what I'm saying is if you take D and you multiply it with E and you calculate it modulo this, this guy, okay, so mod uh, 2, 4, 3, 6. Okay, let's do this. So, okay, so I'm doing the calculation now in, 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 in black, right? So this is 937 times 13. So what is that? Uh, 937 times 13, that is 12,181. Uh, and what is this now? Modulo 246. Okay, I'll do the calculation one time. So this is 5 times 2, 4, 3, 6, plus, so let's now see, 2, 4, 3, 6 times 5 is 12, 180. Oh, it's just plus 1. Yeah, that's what I said. This says that this is equivalent to 1 modulo uh, uh, 2, 4, 36. So D is indeed the inverse of E. Now, why? This is, of course, the whole thing. Why do we need this? And now... This is the magic. We haven't, I haven't told you the magic yet. I just pointed to all the, the pieces, right? This piece and this piece and this piece. But now comes the magic. Okay. So, let's look how this works. We have this M. That was the original message. What did Bob do? He calculated the E power and calculated this mod little mod, mod M. Okay? Okay. So, this became C. What does Alice do? She takes C and raises it to the power D and calculates mod N. So let's put this together, what we have here now. So C is, I replace, I'm putting C, replacing C by M to the E. So what this is, is, I'm going to write now everything in black because there was too much color changing. So we take C to the power D, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. C is m to the e, m to the e, and that I put to the power d, and I do this mod m. So this is equivalent to that mod m. Okay, the power of power that is m times d e mod n. Now what is m? Okay, m, n is don't forget n is p times q. Okay, so bear with me. I'm gonna have to do a little bit. So what does it mean that two numbers are the same, right? This means that they are this uh, modular model, model, modulus means that they are divisible by that modulus, right? So in particular, what I'm trying, okay, now let me say it that way, sorry. I'll go back to what, I'll, I'll say it differently. Now, on the side, let's look at this number, M, D, E, mod P. Let's just calculate it modulo the first guy, well, this P, okay? Ah, I know that when you have a prime number, n is not a prime number. So that's why I have to wait a little bit. Now p is a prime number, so I can use Fermat's little theorem. Fermat's little theorem. And that says, I will remind you very quickly what it says, if you take a to the power p minus 1, that is equivalent to 1 mod p. And that from that we learn that if we take an exponent and we take the we look at its remainder modulo p minus 1, we can replace the exponent by that remainder. 
Remember this? This was one of the latest quizzes that we did. But what is the remainder of dE? Now, remember, what is what we know about d times e? d times e is equivalent to 1 mod n, uh, mod capital N. Right? That's, remember, this is what I said. Don't, don't confuse the capital N with the little n, because they're different. So d is equivalent to mod n. What is mod what is this n? n was p minus 1 times q minus 1. So this says that the number de minus 1 is divisible by n. This is what this means, right? n divides this number. Therefore, p minus 1 divides this number. So we get this. Uh, sorry, let me put it that way. If your if you're equivalent modulo a bigger modulus, then you can take the factors. So in your equivalent modulo, the factor of any factor, right? We have used this here too, right? Here we used MDE, we're going to use the same thing, modulo PQ. Now we look at one of the factors. So now we take one of the factors of this thing, because what does this mean? This means that if you take the difference of these two numbers, it's divisible by n. Well, if it's divisible by n, it's definitely divisible by p minus 1, which is a factor. So this is still true. Ah, but this tells me here, we remember now that we can replace... So in general, so the, res so the result, the way that we use this, if you take a to the power k, that's the same as a to the power, um, and if k is equivalent to um, 1 mod p minus 1, let's do it this way. Okay, suppose that k is equivalent to 1 mod p minus 1, what does it mean? Well. That means that you can write k minus 1, you can, can write k as a multiple of p minus 1 plus 1. So a to the k is equal to a to the l to the p minus 1 times a. I'm doing one more time this calculation that we have done so many times. That is a to the power p minus 1 to the power l times a. But this whole thing is equivalent to 1 mod p. So if k is equivalent to 1 mod p minus 1, then a to the k is equivalent to a mod p. That's what we, we, we that's how we use Fermat's little theorem for fast modular exponentiation. Meaning what? Well, we are exactly in this situation. So this means that this is the same as m mod p. So if you take the coded message c. You raise it to the d power. What you're calculating is this number, but modulo p it's the same as the original message. But that's modulo p. Well, what what happens modulo q? You think exactly the same reasoning because if I now replace p by q, we have to replace p minus one by q minus one, which is the other factor. That's why we have exactly these two factors here. So this is true for p, but this is also true for q. mod q, uh, q. So m to the e is equivalent to m mod q, and m to the e is equivalent to m mod p. So let's write it up. Let, let, let me, oh. Okay, let, let me write it down here. So let, let, what we have found. We found that m to the power de is equivalent to m mod p, and m to the de is equivalent to m mod q by the now we use the chinese remainder theorem remember what the chinese remainder theorem says if you take a different model model line that are relatively prime and here we have p and q where i should have said this distinct prime numbers so they are definitely relatively prime then any solution that you have uh, can be has a unique solution modulo the product. So you can also, and so what we are saying is if we have this modulo p, another way of saying this, if you take the difference between these, these two numbers and you, it's divisible by p, the difference of this number is also divisible by q, so the difference is divisible by n. So what we have is that m to the power de is equivalent to m mod p times q, which is n. And that means that modulo n we have found the original message back. Remember what was this? This was c to the power d, right? 
this was c to the power d so you get the message you put it to the d power why you do that because it is then this man This, this c to the d, you got c, you take this to the d power, so you're trying to decode, and what you get, modulo n, you get m. Now modulo n, of course, if you calculate this just as a power, it's a much bigger number, but modulo n, it's the original message. So that is how this uh, procedure works. Okay? That's what, what's behind the... Uh, under the hood. So I'm going to do a simple example. Let's set up now. So Alice wants to do this again. And she wants to use the following uh, number. She wants to use uh, n. So her public n is going to be 143. Now these are small numbers, we can factorize them, so we it's not this is not this is vulnerable to attack. But we always have to think when we do these examples, these are just examples to tell teach us how to do it in real life, where we are our prime numbers are much, much bigger, so that you cannot see that it's actually 11 times 13. Okay. So so what does she has to do now? She has to calc she wants to set this up, and so what's the one thing she has to do is she has to pr propose an E, the encryption key, okay? So, but she has to, so there's one thing she, the E has to do, she cannot just take arbitrary, e, oh well, although that's what happens. In, um, one takes, uh, in, in, in the, when one implements this, one take E to be arbitrary, random, and then the chances that it is relative to primes is extremely high. I think that's what you do. And if it's not, then they test or they test it or something. I don't. They take a random number, test whether it is prime or not, and then they take another one until they have something that is relatively prime. That's how you find something that's relatively prime. Because what is n? Well, n is p minus one times q minus one. But this also, in general, will be a huge number. So also that number you cannot factor. So it's very hard to find to to prove that a certain number is relatively prime. With how do you find a number? Real, if if I give you a big number n. What is the number n here? Let's sorry. Let me put it. Let I'm, I'm talking too much. Let's do some examples. This is ten times twelve, right? So this is one hundred twenty. Okay. So in this case, it's very so small number. But always think about this number being like ten times bigger. So um, ten times. I mean, <laughs> ten ten times more digits. That's what I meant. Um, so how do you find a number that's relatively prime with one twenty? Well, you have to avoid of every prime divisor of one twenty. Right? You cannot take 2, you cannot take 3, you cannot take 4, well, that's not a prime number, you cannot take 5. What's the next one? 7. You can take 7. But that requires you to act a factor, this number, in order to know what you take, for how you find a number that is relatively prime. So that's what I'm saying. The, what the algorithm does is <clears throat> it randomly chooses a number and then checks whether it's relative prime or not. And it keeps doing that until it finds something that is relatively prime. And statistically, this works in three, four tries, you will have something. So we know that this, this can be done by a couple of trials and errors. So this won't take much time. So this particular choosing E doesn't take much time. So in this case, she's gonna take E equal to seven. That's relatively prime, right? Okay, this far, everything was rather simple, but now comes the trick. Now she has to calculate d for herself. I mean, she can wait, but at some point she has to do this. So what is that what she needs to do? Remember, d times e has to be equivalent to 1 modulo, modulo what? Not the, 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 the green little n, which is public, it's the red n, okay? So modulo 120. And this is important, right? So I'm going to ask you to do this on the quiz, set it up for small prime numbers like this, and then you have to make sure that you use the right data. So this is n here, right? So here we, we, we have that d, let me write it in black. So the condition here, the condition that we need to fulfill is that d, d times e is equivalent to 1 mod capital N. D is the multiplicative inverse of E modulo capital N, which is the secret number. It's 120 in this thing. Okay, so we have to calculate this. Let's do this, okay? Let's work this out, do brutal, brutal not using any um, 
online tool or what, what not. So we have to calculate D times E7 is equal to 1 mod 120. How does it work? Well, you start doing the, 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 the uh, cleaning algorithm on 120 and 7. So, uh, oh, 7, it goes in there 17 times. Well, no, that doesn't sound right. Okay, sorry. Let's just calculate it. 120 divided by 7. 120 divided by 7 is 17. So 7, oh, what is right? 17 times 7. 7 times 7 is 119. Oh, look. Oh, wow. That was, that was easy. We got lucky. Okay, we got extremely lucky. So what does this tell me? Right? What does this tell me? Let's, let's write out what we have. The Bazoo forum is 1 is equal to 120. Remember, this acts to 1 circle, but okay. Minus, minus 17 times 7. Okay? So, modulo 120, this is that 1. This is equivalent to minus 17 times 7 modulo 120. So, this is the inverse, but we want a positive number, d. So, we want to have to add another 120 to this, so this is the same as so. So, d is going to be minus 17, which is the same as add another 120, and you get 103 mod 120. So, our decryption key is d, is 103. So, let's write that up. So, we found that d is um, 103. Okay, and we can double check, right? 7 times 103, one o uh, yeah, 103, sorry, 103 times 7 is 721, and if I, uh, that is 6 times 120 plus 1, so that is in, indeed, it's true, it is the inverse. Okay, so we are ready, and we say, we tell Bob, okay, Bob, this is part 1, if you want set up, now Bob, now let's, let's do Bob. Let Bob work a little bit. Bob says, okay, I want you to send you my um, a two-digit number, and the number, it has to always, always, of course, be less than this number, right? So, well, it could be three digits in this case. So, he says, I want you to send you the number. Well, let's say Bob wants to send you the number. The message that he wants to send is 100. Uh, so, Alice says, tell me your grade, okay? For instance, right, it could be just that, just a student... Um, or, or the professor giving the grade to a student. I, I could be Bob and I'm sending you the, 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 your grade and you don't want anybody else to know your grade because you're going to be ashamed about your grade, although it's 100, but you're like, you're one of those people that always think they're doing much, much worse than they're actually doing. So, M is 100. So what does Bob do? Bob says, okay, tell me, what should I do? And you say, okay, N is 143, E is 7. That's my RSA. Um, these are my RSA. My RS, the RSA key. That you can, public, public key. Green, right? Okay, okay, you say, I'll do it. So, what you want me to do? So, C will be, and I'm going to calculate it for you. It is 100 to the power, what was your E? 7. And then I have to calculate this modulo, what was that? Enormous big modulo that I don't know what prime number it is, 143. Of course you know, but you, you pretend to. Okay? Okay, let's calculate this. This is not too bad, right? So 100 to the power 7, well, that's already a bit too big a number uh, from the calculator. So I have to split this up a little bit. I could do the following. This is the same as minus 43. Okay, so I have to calculate this. I'm, I want to be a little bit quick here. I want to, well, I, I'm going to do just do Wolfram Alpha for this one. Okay, so I, I'm going to be really lazy and just say, okay, I take. But I, I, I might you want ask you to do this. No, okay. It's not fair. If I'm going to ask you, I should do it myself. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for you. You ready? Okay. So first thing what we have to do is fast modular exponentiation. That is what I'm going to use. We have been practicing this so much, why not use this? Um, not for a mass little theorem, because 143 is not a prime number. Don't forget that, right? That's the whole point. That's, that's a little bit why. That's why we do this, because it's not a prime number. It's a product of two prime numbers. We, we can use Fermat's little theorem, but only because we know 
what capital N is. If you don't know what capital N is, you cannot do anything. Right? Notice, yes, I should point this out. That what capital N here, it might say, oh, if you, it, it should be easy if you want to know 43, you can easily find 120. No, you cannot. Unless you know 11 and 13, you will not be able to guess this number. Okay, they are in the same range, of, they are not much smaller, but how much smaller, you have absolutely no idea. Okay, so if you don't know this number, you cannot use Fermat's little theorem at all, because you don't know what should you look for, right? What is P minus 1, what is Q minus 1, you don't know. Okay, and N minus 1 doesn't work, by the way. Okay, so fast model exponentiation, what we need to do, we know what we do, we have to write 7 as 4 plus 2 plus 1. Okay, a bit annoying that we have to do all of them. And then we calculate the power, so here we have 100 to the power 1, that is just of course 100, this is modulo 143. And then the next power, 100 squared, so that's 10,000. Okay, let's do this. So 10,000. 10,000 divided by 143 is 69, so this is 10,000 is 69 times 143, so 143 times 69, that is 9,876, so what I'm missing, plus uh, 23, 123, uh, no, 133, 133. Yes, 133, okay? So this is equivalent to 133, which, by the way, is negative 10. So I like to write work a little bit with smaller numbers. Okay, and then we have to square again. So this is 1 to the 4, so I square that, that is just 100. Ah, that, that makes, we are going to make it easier, because what we now have to do is, we have to look at all these, um, uh, all these uh, powers here. Let me not make this in bubbles. Uh, let me make this just a regular one. So we have to use each of these, but just, in other words, we have to multiply this, this, and this, okay? So we have to calculate 100 times 100 times minus 10 mod 143. Well, 100 times 100, we know that, that's minus 10. So that's minus 10 times minus 10 mod 143, and oh my god, this is 100. <sighs> I guess this is... It comes out to be the same. Okay, let's not do that. I, I don't want to do something that comes out the same, that this kind of doesn't sound I'm doing something, right? So let's take a different number. I'm sorry. I just took this random num ran number randomly, so let's therefore take a smaller number. Suppose he wants to transmit the number 15, say. Hopefully I don't run into the same problem. Um, <clears throat> Okay, all right, well, let's start 15. Okay, so we take, we take 15, and then 15 squared, that is uh, 225. And that is equivalent to what model 143, so 225 minus 143, so it's the same as 82. And then we square again, 15 fourth, so 82 squared. And then modo 243, 243, 143. Oh, oh, okay, no, no, this I, 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 this is just my copy error, 143, divided by 143. is 47 times, so this is 80, oh, sorry. Okay, let me do it over again. 82 squared, that was 6,728, and that is uh, 47 times... Uh, 142, so 47 times 143, the 6,000, this is 6,728, so plus 7, okay. So, we now know that this is the same as, well, we have to, we have to take um, 15, 15 square and 15 4, because that's the, the, the number that we chose, okay. So, yeah. so this would be 15 times 82, times 7, okay, so let's work it out, 15 times 82, that is 1230, if I divide this by 143, that is 1230 divided by 143, that's 8, so this is 8 times 143, 
with 11.44 plus um, 100 uh, okay sorry so uh, 86 sorry uh, guys I got a little bit let me do this over again because I don't know what I did divided by 143 that is 8 so 8 times 143 is that minus yeah okay 86 okay so this is 86 these two together is 86 modulo um, 143 so this is 86 times 7 modulo uh, 143 so what is that um, um, okay I, sorry that's 602 that is 4 times 143 so 143 times 4 that is 572 this is 572 this thing so plus um, 30 so I'm getting that C is 30 and so he sends out 30 let me double check here because I, I want to make sure that I did this correctly so this was 15 to the power and seven um, modulo one four three. No, I did something wrong. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, that's correct. So let me double check. I want to see where my mistake is and then we'll correct it. It's the next one that I seem to have made a mistake. Okay, let me do the next one, the, the, the fourth power here. So 82 squared six seven two oh six seven two four oh 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 I copied that number wrong so this was plus three here so this was a three so this is this place so it's only that spot that is wrong okay so I'll do this over again so it is um eighty six times three that 86 times 3 is 258 um, and this is 115 this is equivalent to 115 so the actually the, uh, so the, the coded message let me write it in, in is 115 let me double check now is this what I had Yes, okay, now I'm correct. Okay, so that's what Bob does. And so now let's see, well, we could have done this also. What is Alice going to do? She receives 115. And she, what she now has to do is to decode it. So to find M, to find M, what she does, she takes this number, 115, and raises it to the power, her secret uh, key, which was 103. And this, what she has to do, this modulo, and this is always the same modulus, be careful, this is back, the original modulus, the public modulus 143. So perhaps if you want, I'll make it green. So this is 143. It's not the capital M. That she uses it only, she only uses that once. She uses this capital M only once to set up D. Once she has set this up, she doesn't need that anymore. She knows what D is. So this, this, this guy is only used to set up. Once you have set it up, you only use the public keys, of course, and 
she only uses her secret key T. That's the only thing she did. So the only thing she has to do is 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 take this here. Oh wait, why I wrote this here? I'm sorry, I wrote this on the wrong side. Okay, but all my colors I'm getting completely. Um, what is the power? One or three. Okay. Okay. So I don't want to go now to the whole calculation of. Uh, Working this out. I'm, I'm, I want you to do this. I will do this on a homework problem, but I don't want to make this movie too long So I'm just going to calculate this uh, 150 in, in Using uh, Wolfram Alpha. So what is? Uh, 115 to the power 103 um, Modulo 143 so this number comes out to be and this should be the black number 50 which was the original number okay so you see how it works so this is RSA protocol and um, I'm going to discuss next time why is it safe what makes it safe although I did indicate already a couple of things but I want to say a little bit more about it but I'll do this next time I don't want to make this video too long all right so for the homeworks I'm going to give you some of these to encode these things for yourself set it up and then do coding and encoding, encrypting and decrypting.